why have I never thought about this before? I have a new method I have been adopting recently for my watercolor portraits, and I'm so excited to share it with you guys. This video idea was inspired by an awesome Instagram artist. Her name is Grace Manning. She does commission portraits, pets, and people, and she's so amazing at it. And the way she always starts her portraits is actually with a bright blue. <laughs> Who knew? I never would have even thought about that. I know it seems strange, right? But to me, her portraits look so much more natural and so much more real because of that blue and green undertone that you so often see in especially fair skin, but really any skin tone has a lot of cool color temperatures in it. I mean, if you look at the skin in your hand, you see blue veins, you see all kinds of cool color temperatures, blues and greens, sometimes even purples. So when you're only using warm colors like oranges and pinks and yellows, you're gonna have what looks like an unnatural suntan. So it's so important to introduce some sorts of blues in your portraits. Historically, I've been using burnt sienna and ultramarine for the shadow tones, so I do use blues in my portraits, but it had never occurred to me to just do a wash, an undertone of light blue, and then follow that up with the warmer colors. And for me, this approach has kind of revolutionized my portrait painting and I'm so excited about it. So yeah, again, huge shout out to Grace Manning. You're awesome. So to demonstrate this process today, I'm doing a quick little five by seven inch portrait of my daughter. I'll just show you guys step-by-step step how to do the layering so you can try it for yourself in your next portrait painting. To create the softest skin tones, I always start with a wet and wet technique. But first I'm gonna mix up some of my phthalo blue. This is a core color. Once I've mixed that up, I grab a second larger brush. This is a size eight round brush, and I'm using this to paint clean water all over the face. You do wanna use the wet and wet technique because it will ensure the softest, smoothest blends of color. Once my paper is glossy wet with no puddles, I begin to apply a gentle light wash of the phthalo blue, focusing on the areas that are more in shadow, some of the mid-tones I'm also covering up. What I'm really doing is just painting a first layer in the shadow tones using this light blue. I'm also adding this to the hair. My daughter's hair is blonde, so there is always a lot of color in blonde hair. For some reason, it, you'll see a lot of greens, blues, purples, browns, and yellows in blonde hair. And then you can see I'm going quite vibrant with the arm here. It looks a little bit crazy right now with this blue wash. I think it's beautiful all by itself, but it's definitely going to need to go darker and more warm in color temperature so that the portrait will begin to look lifelike. My next layer is yellow ochre. This is a Holbein color. I absolutely love this color. I use it all the time. And I'm just going to reinforce all the shadow tones I painted with my blue, focusing especially on the neck, which is one of the darkest values in the portrait and the underside of that arm as it's turning backwards. I also apply a light wash all over the hair. I used my heat tool to speed up the drying process between layers and then re-wet one more time. So this whole process is just a continuous series of wet and wet layers applied once each previous layer is dry. The next wash is a mix of quinacridone rose and transparent orange. This is one of my favorite combinations for those warmer skin tones. You can alternate between more orange or more pink depending on how warm or cool you want the mix to look. Now for the warm brown shadows in the skin tones, I've discovered a great combination that's non-granulating is to mix a warm red like Scarlet Lake with sap green. And this produces this beautiful, rich, warm brown, which is what I like to use now in the shadow tones on the neck and on the chin. So I'm just continuing to add darker and darker values one layer at a time. And I switch to a tiny brush for the details. For details like the eyes and the underside of the nose, the crease of the mouth, you definitely wanna use wet on dry instead of wet on wet so that your paint actually stays put and doesn't soften out or diffuse. So just keep building up your layers. And by now, I don't know how many layers this is, but you can see that the blue has almost completely disappeared. We do get a subtle sense of that cool color temperature glowing beneath the highlights but they're pretty much all camouflage now under those warm tones. By the way, if you guys like my style of teaching and you wanna learn more about portraits, check out my Watercolor Mastery membership. Included in the membership are not only over 150 fully narrated real-time tutorials, but also a whole section on portraiture and skin tones. So if you wanna go more in depth, be sure to check that out. I'll leave a link in the description below. I begin to add more details now to the portrait carving out the shape of the profile with the dark hair just behind her face. For this, I use a combination of warm and cool tones. It is so important to keep including those blues in your color mixes so that it doesn't all look tan or all the same color temperature. Within the hair, you can see I'm slipping in little brush strokes of blue in between the brown and tans. 
I like to idealize the hair somewhat, especially if it's a little bit messy, like my daughter's hair. There was a lot of flyaway strands covering up her face and crossing into the background. And so I smoothed that out a little bit, but you can see we're continuing to add more and more layers, just building up the values slowly. Most of this is wet and wet, but as you begin to reach these final stages, you can also do some wet on dry layering. Just make sure that you're softening out all of those layers so that there aren't any hard edges. Watercolor by its very nature tends to want to form hard edges. So when you're painting smooth skin on a child, that can be a little bit difficult. It's helpful to have a second brush that's just damp with clean water to use that to soften any of those edges once you put a colorful brush stroke down. Now for the background, she had trumpet flowers just behind her. So I'm using wet on wet and applying some really rich colors of orange and green and painting a lot looser here in the background so that the sole focus is really on her face. I like to leave a couple of little areas untouched by the paint so it represents the flyaway hair is coming in front of the background and then I can add a second layer just to darken the corners and create a vignette shape. I decided to add some more transparent orange to her skin tones. Once I'd added the background I had a better idea of what else it needed and then for some final touches I used my Dr. PH Martin's bleed proof white to add a few final little strands of hair. This is an absolutely wonderful product if you find that you're having a hard time negative painting around those tiny little strands. You can use a fine liner brush and add these details perfectly. So there's the finished portrait. There's hardly a trace of that blue that we added at the very beginning, but I do see it coming through those skin tones, especially in the highlights, and I just love how this looks. So this was a very quick portrait. Typically, I'll spend a lot more time on a portrait just so that I can get the likeness perfect, but I thought this was such a fun example to show you guys. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you were able to pick up some good tips for your own portrait paintings. Leave me a like and a comment, and I'll see you in the next video.